there's been a lot of pain, right? Throughout our way of being. And that's because it's been built on dysfunctions. Right now we see that uh, there has never been justice specifically for black and brown communities. The people making the decisions are not connected with the people that are facing the reality. And I particularly also feel morally violated by just how intensive um, in a carbon sense it is to live in the system that we've set up. And so seeing how we are part of the problem is also something that can be tough to deal with. So I just want to encourage anyone who's going through pain, loss, etc. Just breathe in the release and just keep reinvesting in the possibility of change and positive change. And there's a lot of things that are in our own hands, as well as things that need to have happen on a systemic level. And so all of this comes together to create, you know, a sense of radical hope when we connect with others over these emotions and help each other harness them to create the sustainable outcome that we really need. So let's take this, this opportunity the world is giving us to, to reflect and to reconnect with our emotions, with our purpose, with our motivations, with our no, noble goals. We're kind of taught to run away from quote unquote negative feelings like anxiety, despair, fear, overwhelm. And yet I believe that transformative climate action, like lifting the consciousness of society, depends on us being willing to look in the face of our grief, look in the face of the damage we've already inflicted on the planet, look in the face of the fact that it is already too late for many frontline communities. It's already too late for the first species to go extinct because of climate change. And from that place of grief, holding a tension between our anxiety about the state of the world and also a grounded hope that we have for the alternative, we can begin to forge our way forward uh, and all be part of that solution. You know, you ask uh, any child um, how they, not any child, but some children and, and teenagers, you know, how they envisage the future. And um, same with adults, most people will give you a pretty dystopian picture of how the future looks. Because we're focusing so much on the negative and the fright and the loss and the grief. And we also have a responsibility as storytellers to open up what we can think about, you know, stories present seeds in our minds that then open up new possibilities. And so um, for some people, they think, oh, that's hopium and that's make-believe and those things aren't possible and you're just fiction writing there. But actually, no, we work towards what we are exploring our, in our minds consciously and subconsciously. And we also have the duty here to be able to present that more beautiful, just world where we've shifted from a model of domination that we currently have to a model of mutually beneficial partnership with all people and non-human species. And when we start to imagine what that looks like and give people a sense of what it tastes and smells and feels like and what their role is in it, we have a better chance of being able to work towards it. And how can we, through cross-movement collaboration and in our networks and in our communities, come to, like, come to start getting excited about building vision like what is the world that you want to see like what mm -hmm. is the world that my heart desires